So rectal syringe can definitely be a bit um, uncomfortable. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be painful, but it definitely can be uncomfortable. So I wanted to just go over what you can do to make this process less painful. <laughs> um, you know, so the first is, you know, the syringe and everything. So your rectal syringe. Um, I have noticed that for most of the syringes over time, because like obviously you're going to reuse this and make sure you're using like antibacterial soap, just like wash it down with really, really hot water. So um, you could even, um, I guess, uh, have it in like maybe rubbing alcohol, just like dip it in there just to sterilize it. But um, usually hot antibacterial water and soap um, will do it. And then you just let it take out the stopper, let it air dry overnight. Um, you could have it on a paper towel or whatnot whatever you find works easiest for you. Um, so I have my bag of glutathione. This was the 100 gram bag that I showed you guys, I think three or four weeks ago. Um, I'm still working on that. I'm just doing two teaspoons a day, so which is like 4,000 milligrams. And um, I'm very happy with that. And um, sometimes I find if I take it at night, sometimes I will fall asleep and my body will retain it longer. And then when I wake up, I'm just waking up and obviously I let all the waste and all of the bile out. So when you do that, if you fall asleep while your body is resting, basically it's going to be making bile and you don't know how long it's going to take basically. Like you don't know how long you're gonna stay asleep until your body like tells you, hey, get up, go. So with that being said, it could be an hour, it could be two hours, it could be three hours. I think last night I made it maybe three hours or something, it was crazy. Um, but the longer you keep it in, the better. So when you're awake, sometimes if it's really uncomfortable, it's hard to even get to 15 minutes. And I've had that happen to where I barely made it. Um, that's something happened to me once or twice since I got back on doing the rectal glutathione and I've been doing this for almost a month now. So, um, hopefully this will help you if you're finding that you have a really, really hard time keeping it in and making it to at least 15 minutes. Cause like you really have to leave it in at least 15 minutes. Um, Honestly, I would, I just would feel like anything else is just a waste. For me, most days I'm doing 30 minutes to an hour or if like last night I fell asleep and um, you know, that was a quite a few hours. And so the longer it stays in, the more bile you produce, the more bile you produce. It's just, it's supercharging your body full of glutathione. Like I swear, it, it's crazy. Just how much it stimulates your body to naturally make more glutathione. And I don't know, I just feel like you're getting the most out of it. So using reduced glutathione can be really, really rewarding, but um, it can be uncomfortable. So usually I'm just using the water from the tap. I fill this up to about right here or so and with water. And then I, I put the water in here and then I add my two scoops, two teaspoons of this. And then I add in a dash of baking soda. Someone said, depending on how much baking soda you're using that could irritate you more like because um baking soda is used as an enema to stimulate you to go to the bathroom so try not to use too much baking soda <laughs> you you want the water to not have any white white lumps so once you see that everything is either milky or clear or whatever then you, you can stop like you just you just don't want to have any clumps that's why we're using the baking soda it helps it to mix easier but yeah, if you use too much baking soda, because sometimes I'm just like shaking the baking soda, in there, baking soda in there, and sometimes I definitely get too much. And yes, they were right. On those days, it is way harder for me to keep it inside for a long time. So make sure you're not putting too much baking soda, just enough to get the mixture going. Um, and yeah, I just let it mix. And then obviously I suck it up with a syringe. Make sure when you're sucking it up with a syringe, that baking soda is still going to be bubbling. And so you might see that some overflows out of the syringe. So you need to have a tissue, either a tissue or toilet paper, wipe off the top of the syringe. You don't want any glutathione or baking soda on this part because when that hits the outside of your skin, when you're putting it into your rectum, it really does not it just it doesn't feel good at all so you want to make sure that this is completely clean of it so after you suck it up make sure you're wiping it off and then let all the bubbles calm down and then obviously i push it up to where the there's no air in there so it's just like the water so i'm not pushing myself full of air because then you know you get gas and all that and that's not fun so yeah push the air out then you're going to take your coconut oil just use the cold press oil or whatnot um i like the one that's still kind of chunky um be generous with it if you're finding that you're still it's hard to insert into your rectum take some of the coconut oil and 
do your rectum as well so you'd be lubricating both um, but most people are going to be able to just get away with just really lubricating this part remember when you're sticking it in it really is only going like that far in it's not you're not putting a whole lot in there <laughs> um, don't go too far in but really just making sure that the outside is clean from that baking soda and glutathione mixture is I think the most important part because yeah that's what can cause like a lot of irritation around there and it's gonna make it to where you just feel like not sitting down for a while or where walking it just feels uncomfortable like you don't want that you want to leave this in for as long as you can I like to do it at night because I said, you know, the gas though, the gas is awful like the first week, the second week, it really does get better the more you do it. But understand the more, the longer you leave it in there, um, the more bile you're making. And then, you know, your body's gonna let you know that you, you know, you're gonna have a little bit of gas. So it's like, there's no way to get around having no gas at all because like, the gas is just the sound of, you know, your, your body trying to like expel everything and trying to push everything out. So it's like, that is a normal part of it. But I, I did notice there was like a ton of gas, like way too much gas the first couple of weeks. And that's just, I think it's just a part of the de detox phase as well as my body getting used to it. And there's just really not much you can do is what I'm trying to say. Um, but your body will get uh, better with it. But at some point you're always going to have some gas because it's just, you know, it's the it's a messy business doing rectal syringes, but it can be really rewarding. So to me, it's like it's worth it. Um, also, yeah, so just making sure the area is lubricated really well with that coconut oil. I think that is probably just as important as making sure that there's no residue on the outside of it. Making sure you're putting it in there slowly. Do not just jab. I like to lay down for this. So you probably, if you find that it's easier for you to stand, then do it. But I like to lay down, be slow with it, push it in there slow. If you're doing two rectal syringes a day, like that's a, I don't want to say it's a lot of friction. Like, but you know, if you're not used to that, it, it can be. And so you don't want to irritate that area is what I'm trying to say. When you're putting the water in, also how far you push the plunger, how far, how fast you push the plunger is going to um, affect how quickly your body wants to reject it, I find. So if I'm pushing it in slowly, I find that I'm able to keep it in longer um, when I just like, you know, the plunger gets stuck and sometimes like I'm pushing pushing and all of a sudden it goes all the way up sometimes I find I find it's harder to keep it in longer when I do that so yeah you just want to be really gentle you definitely want to take your time you have to lay down lay down if you have to lubricate both your rectum with the coconut oil and the syringe then do that too um, and then you know just just lay there for a little bit so after I already have the plunger all the way up sometimes I just leave it in for like a couple of seconds let my body adjust and then I slowly remove it. So you're trying to do this in a way that you are not causing unnecessary irritation to this very, very, very sensitive spot. Um, Cause you guys should already know, like if you've ever done a rectal syringe, you already know how I can, you know, how I can get. So if you do those things, you should be okay. Um, and if you do feel like you're getting irritation from it, then, um, or like it's just, it's hard for you to keep it in for a while, then definitely switch to something else, maybe an acetyl or a liposomal glutathione and just take those orally or do um, a nebulizer. Just with the nebulizer treatment, understand that that smell, it's like you can't get away from the smell. So it's like either you're having gas that smells awful from the rectal syringe or you have, you know, the sulfury egg smell from using the nebulizer. So, yeah, it's it's just a part of, I don't know, it's just a part of it. <laughs> I don't know how to get around it, but I hope these tips helped. And um, as far as the water that you're using, you're, you're really only using a little bit of water, like from here to here of water. Like it's really not a lot. Of water so you can use distilled or you can just use water from your tap whichever you feel comfortable with um, I do either or and I have had no issues